Good morning, everyone. It is my pleasure to be here today and have the opportunity to share insights regarding CI Financial's digital transformation program and some of the lessons we learned in our journey in the last three years. It is hard to explain and fit all aspects of this program in 20 minutes. And I think I will probably leave you with some unanswered questions. So feel free to reach out to me if uh, you are interested to know more or if you have any questions in your mind left um, unanswered. For the benefit of uh, those who may not be familiar with us, I thought to start with a uh, brief introduction to our company. Founded and born in Canada in 1965, CI Financial is one of the largest diversified global asset and wealth management companies operating in Canada, the US, and Australia. We went through a significant transformation program at the strategy, technology, and HR level in the last three years. And as a result, our asset under management grew significantly in, the period to, in this period to over 384 billion as per a Q4 2021 financial reportings. With over 2,500 employees, the group operates in Canada using the six brands listed on this slide. We also have 23 U.S. registered investment advisors, or call them RIAs, located in different, different cities across the U.S. Our Canadian headquarters in, is in downtown Toronto, and our U.S. headquarters is located in Miami. So while I am the lucky person chosen to present our uh, story today, our achievement wouldn't be possible without the extraordinary support and kind of contribution of our executive and leadership team, the entire CI members, specifically at operations, IT, IT client experience, HR, automation, and EPMO departments, who genuinely worked hard in the last three years to transform our operating model. They are our true champions, and I mean it. Our execution partners who work very closely with us in different stages of this program, uh, we owe them a lot, specifically McKinsey and you know, company team who were our partners during our gap analysis phase, the Deloitte team who were our automation and capability build up, building partner, and also the BCG consulting team who were our execution partner in our AI and machine learning uh, build. So let's start with uh, going over an overview of, let's start with going over an overview of our digital transformation program with a few facts and metrics and then jump into the uh, lessons learned. So uh, looking at this chart, you will see that over the course of uh, last three years, our manual operation evolved into a cluster of modern intelligent uh, document processing center or IDP with human in loop, where the art of process streamlining and the power of robotic process automations, RPA, and intelligent character recognitions, or ICR technologies meet, allowing us to digitize any type of you know, incoming analog da data, could be in the form of physical mails, emails, PDFs, or image, automatically with an extremely high degree of accuracy, makes the, uh, make them ready for the RPA bots to process. Our bots uh, can process and execute their assigned task 24-7. They, they are smart enough to decide if any specific, any specific case needs to be sent for human supervision. Once a case is sent to human supervision, bots look at the human humans while they are processing that specific case, observe how the case is being uh, resolved, and learn from each case resolution. So next time when, the, when a similar case comes in queue, they will know how to deal with it. So they get smarter and smarter as they work. Uh, the chart on your left shows uh, how our fully automated processing volumes ramped up in the last one and a half years and how accurate and precise IDP cells are working now. Currently, we are processing about 100,000 pages per month automatically uh, using the RPA and the ICR technology and with an 80% accuracy, which is really amazing and uh, mind-boggling, I would say. So our IDP cells are capable of digitizing even handwritten data easily. As you see in this uh, sample case shown on the left, the ICR platform actually processed a manually completed, uh, completed account opening form, grabbed all the data. Here we will see that uh, JSON has been grabbed by the machine and transformed the uh, JSON you know, as, a, as a data. I tried to also show you some KPIs and metrics we are getting from AI and machine learning use cases. The pie charts present the recent metrics of one of the AI use cases we built for 
our sales department to predict uh, the likelihood of a specific uh, sales related event to happen in the next three months based on analyzing a large sets of data. As you see, the machine predicts that uh, these future events with 95% accuracy, 97% precision, and 96% F1 score, which is really, you know, a high degree of, you know, certainty. Okay, let's jump into the lesson section. Lesson one, uh, you need to know where you are standing and what your gaps are first. So start your journey with a uh, comp uh, comprehensive gap analysis. Be honest and ready to get a low mark. And it is totally fine, totally fine to uh, get a low mark and very typical. Do not get disappointed, obviously. Uh, try to involve a professional and impartial third party in your diagnosis phase. Someone who cannot be intimidated uh, by your top management or be worried about their job or worried about the you know, extent and size of the gaps. So uh, allocate a reasonable time. So I would say maybe three to six months depending on the size of your uh, company to do this. Do not rush. This is a very important phase. This is exactly like you know, the medical exam you needed to do before the surgery. X-ray your organization from tip to toe by walking through main processes across your operations, IT departments, IT processes, HR, client service, finance, and the rest of you know, the core of your business. Be ready to, get, uh, uh, to be ready to go over a very painful process. Interview all levels of your organizations, including executives, managers, supervisors, MEs, and the rest of the employees. You can use the anonymous third-party surveys and capture the status quo. Deep dive into the cost and SGNA and identify the cost-saving opportunities, and also any immediately addressable you know, areas that you can actually reduce the cost and improve the efficiency by using the automations or using you know, an adoption of you know, emerging technologies and emerging uh, business practices. Analyze your org organizational chart in the areas uh, and using you know, some AI-based or, or organizational chart you know, analyzers to identify departments and you know, functions that you, know, you can actually you know, reduce you know, uh, the level of span of the controls and you know, make it more lean and you know, get some efficient, more efficiency out of it. And this is exactly what we've done. So listen to top management should be fully involved and clearly demonstrate and communicate their support within the organizations. If you do not uh, have this support, do not start. I, I repeat, do not start. Always remember without your CEO, president, CFO and COO support, your CIO title stands for career is over and not chief information officer or chief innovation officer. So uh, lesson three, you need to define and own a digital transformation definition, which is uh, applicable uh, to your own company. You cannot just cut and paste boiler template definition. First, you have to educate yourself through reading books and articles, benchmarking success and failure cases, looking at your gaps, analysis, outcomes, and your culture, and then coin your own term. If you read 100 digital transformation books and talk to 100 consultants, you will, all, you will probably get you know, over 200 uh, different definitions and approaches. This is how we land and define our you know, digital transformation in our own language. So uh, let's go to uh, start the, to the next lesson. You need to understand why over 80% of DX programs fails. If you know the root causes in advance, you can be prepared and put uh, some preventive measures around it. So McKinsey actually published a very uh, a valuable summary, summarizing four main categories of root causes for transformations uh, programs failures. What we think, uh, what we might think actually of uh, usual suspects, like, you know, oh, we have inadequate resources, poor planning, bad ideas, or unpredictable, you know, external events, turn out to account for less than a third of failure reasons. In fact, Basically, more than 70% of failures are driven by what we categorize as a poor organizational health, either employee resistance to change or lack of top management support. Mm -hmm. Lesson five, take change management seriously because it is serious. There is not a shortage of things we can do when it comes to change management, and the list is long. However, it is uh, worth it to mention some of the key uh, items here. So the very first thing we need to do is with vigor and actually with discipline is to establish and engage with the workforce 
in high compact two-way communications. Study shows the change programs that make their organizations feel engaged and energized through the, uh, through the communications and involvement are actually having four times you know, uh, more likely to succeed than programs that don't do these things. So there are many ways uh, and methods that you know, we can use. There is a famous say, say, quotes and sayings in change management, which is, says actually, it is difficult to get man to understand something if his salary depends upon not understanding it. And I think are, it, is a, it is damn right. You know, this is actually really bullseye. So if, if, if the employees, you know, uh, compensations are not tied to success of this program, so you will have a very uh, low uh, likelihood of the, uh, you know, uh, being successful in change management. So to expand a bit more on this, uh, let's look at the four levels of influence models. Basically, from everyone's point of view or as an employee, he or she will say, I will change my mind and behavior if I understand what is being asked of me and makes sense. So basically, the, this actually emphasizes the element of understanding and convictions. And if I see that our structure, processes, systems, incentive supports, supports the change, and this basically emphasizing the reinforcements and mechanisms. And if I have the skills and opportunities to behave in a new way, and this is actually the element of confidence and skill building. And lastly, if I see my leaders, managers, and supervisors doing the same. So this is basically role modeling. So if you don't do understanding and convictions, if you don't reinforce mechanisms, you don't have a reinforcement mechanism, and if you don't uh, basically uh, provide confidence and skill building and role modeling, so basically, most probably the change management is going to, to fail. There's one more thing uh, on change management subject, which I couldn't actually convince myself not to mention, as it is not obvious. And uh, that is, you need to mobilize influence leaders. So senior leaders aren't the only ones that uh, employees listen to or take the lead from. There are usually uh, influence leaders you know, uh, deep in their organizations that if they are excited about it, uh, and on board with the change program can have a disproportionate effect on the energy levels of everyone else. So influence leaders are people who, regardless of their official title or status, have a wide circle of personal contacts. If you draw the social network of this specific company, you will see other individuals are having actually a much stronger social network. Once you identify these influencers, there are many ways to get them mobilized. You can get them as an early adopter of your programs, or you can involve them on the pilot projects. It is also ideal to bounce any new ideas to enhance implementation efforts of these, of, with these groups to ensure they will be uh, as powerful as possible and support and broadly uh, uh, you know, support the uh, change within the organizations because these are the main influence of your, uh, your firm. Uh, lesson seven, it is extremely important to build an effective governance and monitoring structure around your transformation program. You need to make sure top-level executives are uh, directly involved, stay in the loop, and constantly getting updated reports about the status of the program. Transformation should become one of the key strategic priorities year after year, not just the first year. This requires having an energetic transformation champion, formal governance, and you know, reporting structures, and owning the implementation responsibility by the field managers. Field managers shall own their transportation lab and get all the credit for their uh, lab's achievements. You as a CIO should not actually make it personal. You have to make it personal for them. Remember, as your uh, company's DX champions, your responsibility is basically finding local champions and let them shine and let them basically run the business and run these labs. Lesson eight is basically uh, never jump into full execution without having a, a successful pilot. Outcome of a pilot can lead to either an organizational momentum or organizational apathy. For your uh, pilot, try to pick something which is a uh, known, well-defined and real problem. It should be a chewable size with a high chance of success with a clear way to measure the outcomes. Once the pilot done, you need to decide on how you would like to enhance or scale up. There are all, uh, always three methods, big bang, systematic sprint, and slow rollout, depending on time to, to impact and operational leaks, risk that you can take. So in our case, we picked actually the uh, path of uh, systematic sprint with two to three years of kind of roadmap. 
Lesson uh, nine, you know, uh, all transformation programs require um, employees to keep the everyday business on track while at the same time they change, uh, they have to change how everyday business is done. So this additional work by definition requires more energy. So it is very important to ensure that transformation program generates more energy than it consumes. It is all too common that after the launch of the program and completion of the first pilot, even the pilot is 100% successful. Employee lose sight of the bigger picture and begin to feel that they are being asked for pain with no gain, they foster you know, cynicism and you know, fatigue. Uh, this period is normally called the valley of desol desolation. So many DX programs, even after having successful pilot projects, stops and terminate at this stage. So to, min to minimize the time spent in this valley and also reduce the risk of the program termination on this stage, you should use the techniques explained before, like mobilizing influence leaders, making the change program personal for a critical mass leaders, rigorously and reinforce it through uh, ongoing two-way communications and the other elements of change management. And last but not least, use every opportunity to reduce your organizational digital accent. Measure the digital fluency of your firm regularly and use any possible opportunity to reduce it. You can use formal or informal training, showcasing new technologies, bringing technology vendors to come and demo their platforms to your executive teams and your team, keep benchmarking industry uh, you know, leaders, adding fresh blood into your organizations through hiring individuals with lesser uh, digital accents and uh, actually you know, uh, with higher digital fluency. Lastly, be prepared for a long journey. It's a journey, it's going to be fun, and if you do it right, you will definitely you know, be successful. In the end, I will leave you with a list of resources I used in this deck, plus some additional books and articles for those who are interested. So some of these books is actually very informative. If you read, basically, you get a very good understanding about digital transformations, basics, and also the fundamentals. So thanks for your time today, and all the best in your uh, DX journeys, and enjoy the rest of the day and seminars. Thank you.